Hi, this is Pastor Ken Chorley at the Market Street Presbyterian Church, located at 11, 1100 West Market Street in Lima, Ohio. And I'm continuing my Bible study on Psalm 119, and I'm going to take the first section, or the first eight verses. Now, in watching this video, you will see the text in front of you, but you will not see my face because I'm in the church office in my study and I'm holding the Bible in front of me and talking so that you can see the text as I talk and exposit this piece of Holy Scripture for you. So, as mentioned in my introduction, the structure is acrostic, meaning that the first line and all lines in the first section, the eight lines, begin with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is Aleph. You'll see it right here. That's an Aleph. Okay, that would be comparable to the English letter A. So, line one begins with Aleph. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Now, to be undefiled means to not have sin dominating in a life. And the way to not have sin dominating in a life is to walk in the law of the Lord. It is to place oneself in direct obedience to what God says in His Holy Word. That's why it's so important to study the Word of God because the Word of God tells us how to obey God Almighty. Now it begins using the word blessed. And the word blessed is a little hard to translate into English. But some weak translations will say happy. Happy are those. That's a weak translation. Blessedness means being completely fulfilled and satisfied in the spiritual realm. It does not necessarily mean that one has a great deal of riches of this earth. But what it does mean is that the individual who is blessed knows satisfaction and contentment, and yes, even joy. Now, why is it that this can happen in a person's life? Because the law of the Lord is in front of us, or the words of the Holy Bible. And as an individual brings himself or herself into conformity to the law of the Lord, that individual begins to experience a state of blessedness. Now notice at the very end of the verse, the word Lord is in capital letters. Whenever the Bible shows the word Lord in capital letters, it is a reference to God's specific name. Some versions, if they wanted to be literal, might translate it, walk in the law of Yahweh. The German version of the Hebrew Yahweh is Jehovah. But nevertheless, whenever you see capital L, capital O, 
capital R, capital D. That is the author's way of giving you the specific direct name of a holy God. It was first given in Exodus when Moses went to the burning bush and he asked, who is it that I should say sent me? And he said, tell him I am who I am. God's holy name. You will be blessed if, number one, you read your Bible, number two, you study your Bible, number three, you obey the Bible. So let's go on now to verse number two. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, that seek him with their whole heart. Now the word testimonies is a synonym for law. Remember in my introduction I gave you those eight synonyms for essentially the same thing. Do not let the word mislead you or confuse you. Basically it is saying the same thing as verse number one. But what is added is with the whole heart. In other words, obedience is kept wholeheartedly, not half-heartedly. Remember how the prophet Isaiah rebuked the nation and said, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So in verse 1 it talks about walking. And walking means lifestyle. When your lifestyle is in conformity to the holy word of God, then you know blessedness. In verse number 2 when it says when you keep or obey these testimonies or laws, or words of God, and seek them with your whole heart, then you will know blessedness. So all of Psalm 119 is about a state of blessedness, and the blessedness comes from understanding, and applying, and even meditating on God's holy word. Okay, let's go to verse number three. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. The more you know of what God wants, the less you want to sin. This doesn't mean that, that you don't sin, it just simply means the desire to sin gets less and less because you want to please God. An individual that lives to please himself or herself misses this most important point. We live to please God primarily. I certainly am not excluding the fact that there are times in life we need to take care of ourselves and seek some form of pleasure in this life. But I'm simply saying that iniquity or sin is to not have a part in our lives. You are to not walk in iniquity. You are not to seek iniquity. What are you to seek? Well, the second half of verse 3, to walk in his ways. In other words, to live a lifestyle that's completely in conformity to the ways of God's word. Okay, now we go to verse number 4. 
thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Now remember, precepts is the same as testimonies and the same as law. Those are the eight synonyms I referred to in my introduction. If you're not familiar with that, go to the video marked Psalm 119 Introduction. So we are commanded to keep His Word. Now many people want to live as if God's Word is not binding and a commandment on their life. They want to have the option to do as they wish and to forget what the Holy Word of God says. But everyone is under a commandment to keep God's ways. Now, how should these ways be kept or obeyed? And you'll see an adverb there. Diligently. In other words, an all-out effort to keep God's word. To live a life it's in agreement with the Holy Bible and not only in agreement with but wants to be diligent to be in agreement with the Holy Word of God okay so let's go on then to the next verse Okay, I'm at my desk trying to adjust the Bible in front of you. I apologize for that, but I wanted to try to put the text right in front of you as I'm talking. Verse number 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Now remember, statutes is the same as law and testimonies. By the way, just a little footnote, I think when I did the intro video, I forgot to include that last T, so it looks like statues, <laughs> not statutes. So I apologize for the mistake on my intro video. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes, or thy law, or thy testimonies or the Holy Word of God. I call this a burst prayer. He just bursted out in prayer. He bursted out in expressing his wish and desire. He bursted out because he's overwhelmed and overpowered by the Holy Word of God. And that's what the Word of God should do in your life. It should be overpowering you. Now, if it's not overpowering you, you need to stop and ask some questions. Why is it not overpowering me? Why do I not feel this way? Why do I not think this way? And there is most likely some obstacle or blockage or incorrect thinking that is preventing you from bursting out with the same type of prayer, same type of desire, and saying to yourself and saying to Almighty God, Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Now let's go to verse number six. 
then shall I not be ashamed whom I have respect unto all thy commandments. I shall not be ashamed. Now, there's one thing about sin. Sin brings shame. You remember when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. They realized they were naked and they sought to cover themselves with fig leaves. For the first time, their humanness was shaming because sin had entered into their lives. Sin had entered into the world. And sin will bring a great deal of shame upon an individual who will not be able to look at God face to face and eye to eye. I remember one time when I was living with my dog who was a Sheltie and this Sheltie did some bad things when I was gone from the house. The Sheltie got hold of my garbage cans and emptied them on the floor and I know it was the dog. There was no other possibilities. And when I arrived and saw this, I confronted the dog and I said, Nicholas, did you do this? And he was looking at me <laughs> and he realized that I was talking about the mess, the garbage mess, and he dropped his eyes and dropped his head and walked away slowly in shame. Yes, even animals can feel shame. Now that's the way it is for us when we sin. When we sin, there's a sense in which shame comes upon us. And, and it, it's not a good thing to have because it will stifle your relationship with God and your relationship with others. So the Bible is saying, I will not be ashamed. Why? When I have respect unto all thy commandments. In other words, when I realize that the Holy Word of God was given to help me, not punish me, then I can be released of this power of shame. When I am aware of the fact that God's word is a blessing and not a curse, then I won't be ashamed. When I realize that God's word helps and not hinders, I will not be ashamed. And maybe many people don't read the Bible or study the Bible because they're so afraid that they will find something in it that tells them they've done something wrong. Well, if that is the case, there's always the forgiveness that God offers to us. Let's go on to verse number 7. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. Okay, now what is the result of careful reading of the Bible, careful study of the Bible, and a wonderful love of the Bible? The result is praise. And if there's any one thing that God wants, it's praise. And praise is about extolling the attributes or characteristics of Almighty God. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. In other words, 
I will be completely right before God, and as I stand right before God, with my mouth, with my voice, with my thoughts, I will give God what is due to God, praise. God loves the praises of his people. It says elsewhere in the Psalms, he inhabits the praises of his people. So if you want God to come near to you, then God will draw near to you as you praise him with your heart. Now, take a look at the second half of verse number seven. When I have learned thy righteous judgments. Now, there again, the word judgments is part of those eight synonyms for the word of God. So testimonies, laws, precepts, judgments, it's all the same. When I have learned about how God has made judgments or decisions about certain things. And the word judgments implies decision making. Now all decision making needs to reside with God and the decisions that God has made and not with us per se. And what I mean by that is all ethical areas have already basically been decided in the Holy Word of God. Now the world always presents to you the opposite of what God wants in your life and the opposite of the values that God wants you to have. So the world is constantly bombarding you with the opposites of the Holy Word of God. Now keep that in mind as you are exposed to the world. Realize that the world does not want you to understand the judgments of God let alone to agree with the judgments of God. James, in his epistle, puts it this way, friendship with the world is enmity with God. In other words, if, if you want to make God your enemy and make him distant from you, start agreeing with all the ways of the world. Now, if you want God to come close to you, and be an intimate part of your life. Start agreeing with everything that's in this holy book called the Bible. All right, let's go to our last verse. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Now notice the two I wills, because the I will starts in verse number seven. I will praise thee with an upright, uprightness of heart. Again, the I will occurs in verse number eight. I will keep thy statutes. There is a determination in the author of Psalm 119 to praise God and to live in obedience to his holy word here on earth. I will keep thy statutes. And statutes is just the same as the ordinances, as the precepts, as the testimonials, as the law, as the judgments. It's all the same. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Now, when we had Bible study on this text, someone was interested in that. 
Why is that there? What does he mean? Forsake me not utterly. And I had to take the individual to the whole idea that the author of this psalm is under some duress, stress, pressure, in tribulation, and indeed some forms of persecution. So the author, because he is under such stress, wants to know that God will remain with him. Now, this probably has happened in your life, that when you face hard times and have a great amount of stress or duress or anxiety, God can seem to be distant. And it is not God that is distant. It is you that have been distant. In other words, it's a feeling that we get when things happen in our life. Trauma comes, tribulation, problems, anxiety, worry, discouragement, depression. It seems as though somehow God has slipped away. But this is a common experience and well documented in the sacred scriptures that this feeling happens to all of us and it happened to the great leaders, believers and saints in Old Testament and New Testament. So he's basically crying out to God to stay nearby him and not separate from him, even though the truth of the matter is it's we who separate ourselves from God. So he ends with an, a determination, a second determination, I will keep thy statutes. I will. Now back to the whole idea of Psalm 119 that basically speaking Psalm 119 is about the Holy Word of God and the power of the Holy Word of God okay and what the Holy Word of God can do in your life for you and to you and in your situation that you are facing so, the greatest temptation of the devil is to forsake the Word of God in the midst of your trials or your tribulations or your sorrows. But I would like to encourage you to make these two affirmations. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. I will keep thy statutes. So I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer and then conclude this message. O oh Lord God, we desire that state of blessedness as mentioned by the psalmist. And it all depends on our response to your holy word. Help us to be determined to seek to be in conformity to it and to seek diligently and to make that great expression of our faith that we will praise thee with uprightness of heart and that we will keep thy statutes. O oh Lord God, do not forsake me or do not forsake anyone who is listening and watching this video. 
We ask it in the name of the one who promised that he would be with us to the very close of this age, even the Lord Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this video. This concludes the video.